Hello, and welcome to Super Senior StarCraft. We have Incognitio on the buttons, playing the game for us, showing us beautiful, beautiful things. We're gonna get right into the game now. So Incog, go ahead and cue yourself up. We play ranked, because there is no other mode. There's, there's not, just play ranked. So we're gonna get into ranked here. And we're gonna find out what the crystal ball of matchmaking holds for us today. Just as a reminder, this is Incognito. He plays the video games. I am Goblin, I talk a lot. And there is always beauty every time we sit down to do one of these. There's been nary a game played that didn't have something to be inspired by. Um, whether that is 20 minute timing attacks, or 13 minute stims, or, you know, runny guys, jetpacks, zerglings, scary monsters in general with their claws. You know, there's just, it's a wonderful game with much in store. And we are getting in there right now. And Incog, take it away. You are playing versus Chara Smoke. He is a scary monster, Chara Smoke. The scary monster the potentially stoned scary monster because if he's charged smoke he could be stoned i don't know what that'll mean for this game as a scary monster but i think it means he's gonna be chilling man we bought both level 40s so clearly an even match it's on expedition lost le which stands for we're gonna make some robots we need some robots so start of the game we build robots. We get them going. Chara Smoke, gonna respond to good luck, have fun, I believe, immediately. Best See, because be he's ready. respectful. He's Smoke. And Smoke, what else is Smoke? Smoke is elusive. It's hard to capture. So I'm gonna guess Chara Smoke is going to Best expand out into weird locations. We could not see a third or even a second not base in a not, not standard place because he is Smoke. He's hard to contain. We're gonna get food. We need food. Food feeds your humans and oils your robots. You gotta get food. Continuing to build some more SCVs, we'll get a scout happening soon and find out what our smoke-like scary monster could be up to. Can Incognito grasp the smoke? No. But can he contain the smoke? Also probably no but we'll wish him the best in doing that, as he is our hometown local hero. Incog going real standard here, taking his barracks first, just gonna, you know, build some more robots, get the shooty guys, cause he got a pew pew the things. Um, another good question to ask when you sit down and see Incognito plays is, how many piles of rocks will he kill? I'm gonna go ahead and put a bet down now and say he's gonna kill at least two piles of rocks, cause Incognito loves to kill rocks. You see him getting in there nice and early with his SCV for the scout, mining some of those minerals to help get a deficit of minerals for the scary monster. And just going ahead and continuing on around, taking a peek -see, seeing an early expansion as expected from a, a scary monster player. He's taking his gas now, so getting going on the gas first wins game strategy. Um, well, not gas first, but you know, the more gas you have, the more likely to win the game. Um, our scary monster player, not really too concerned about him taking a little stroll through the base. Doesn't appear to have any queens up yet. Not really on? doing much about the, the little robot running through. Just hanging out in there. Well, that's good nice. Job, Some good information there for Incog, seeing the spawning pool coming down. So he knows he's going to get his <laughs> claw guys. It's good. It's good. I feel like we need a name for our intrepid SCV. I'm going to call him Bruce. Bruce has seen some things. Bruce was in that base, seeing the scary monsters doing stuff, and the scary monsters are just like, eh, whatever, Bruce is chill, he's just a bro. But, Bruce has a family, and now he's gotta go home and tell them what he saw, and scary monsters being inside of their bases, uh, you know, he may never be the same. Poor Bruce. Poor Bruce. Incog, getting a marine out there. It's a good thing to have. They pew stuff. We've got, we've got Bruce Jr. there just hanging out, taking a little break, and Bruce Sr. as well coming out there. Now Bruce Sr. going back to the line, going to another command center, makes sense. 
We're not seeing any real aggression out of the scary monsters, so might as well. Reapers come out. Just going to do some more scouting with the, the Reaper. I, I feel like Incog is aware that smoke is hard to contain. And so he's making sure that he's keeping an eye on all possible routes here. Um, we've already seen the smoke expand quickly. So maybe a third expansion from smoke soon, maybe. Going to take the Reapers around for a little run. Just see what he can find. You know, if there's still no Queens up, you can get some pressure in there, maybe. Maybe kill some drones or something, you know. They're like, biting the things. I think the drones bite the minerals, and that's how they get them. I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing. They just sort of bite them. So Smoke bringing in his Overlord there. Just taking a peeksy. That is a uh, very elite position he's in there. Um, some lings trying to come in. They're scary claws. They thought about biting the building and then realized there was really no point to it, so they just run off. Got a nice reaper hanging out. We're gonna finally go in with him. It sounds about right. I'm surprised Incog didn't go straight for those rocks, because we know about Incog and rocks. He loves to shoot them. It's pretty much his favorite thing. So taking a little peek around here. Still only seeing the two bases so far. Gonna take just a quick scout around, just stroll through, see what he can find. Some good saturation on his main there. Got his second upgrading now. He's got some guys mining into the second, which is good because it makes them more efficient if there's two there. I'm surprised we don't see this strategy more often in pro games because really it, um, when you have the second command center, it reduces the distance the SCVs need to travel so you collect resources faster. So the Reaper just sort of making a nice little stroll around there, still only seeing two bases. So if Incog can go ahead and get onto his second base, he should be seeing a pretty nice economic advantage in the long term here. Um, the gas is starting to pile up, so that's looking good. Um, getting a starport, a factory, some more barracks. Because you know what you need? You need guys. You got upgrades and guys. And he needs to get the guys and the ships. So he's going to get the ships so he can use the medevac hover strategy, which is really going to win him games. I'm really proud of Bruce. Because Bruce is still alive and hanging out down there. I think even Not Bruce got a friend. Minerals. That, that jetpack guy and Bruce, they go back to college. So they're getting to hang out together. And neither of them has been murdered in cold blood yet. Inca going up for his stem best. timing. A little bit late on the stem, but you know, in the scope of things, it's not 12 minutes. So I'm proud of you, Inca. I'm proud of you. Um, got that starport up, setting the rally points. Going to get them medevacs. Um, that second probably should go somewhere sometime soon-ish at some point. But I think Incog is really trying to utilize the mining strategy we talked about, where you, you know, keep your SCVs traveling less distance. So I think he wants to leave it there for a little longer just to really take advantage of that situation. Um, going ahead, dropping the mules. The mules are nice. Got some nice Hellions out for early pressure that's not happening, but that's okay. Uh, going into the reactor off of the starport. It's good. Uh, I'm guessing that probably the Hellions are just intended for uh, transitioning into Hellbats now. A good thing to have against the scary monsters because you know what kills scary monsters fire it also kills other stuff getting supply blocked that's okay getting the supply rocking out right now not a lot of minerals so the supply block not hurting him too badly and he's building up all of the uh, add-ons to his buildings anyways so he's gonna get better units out of those buildings he's got an armory already so he can get the hell bats he can get additional upgrades when he's ready for them. Looking like it could be a pretty pretty good 10 minute timing attack coming in from Incog here. That stim should be done right around then. No, the stim's already done? Oh, the stim never started. Whoopsie daisies. That gas wins game strategies are being forgotten. Two gas is a little bit hard to continue support off of, but look at him pull in those resources from that mineral patch. They are just swarming in. Go ahead, taking a second now. A good thing to do. Naturals are nice, and looks like he's gonna go in for the 10 minute timing attack, I think, here, which makes sense. Probably a good plan. Take advantage of those units, see if our scary monster has done anything. If nothing else, he's gonna be able to deal a bit with the creep spread, which is good, because the creep is, you know, it's all bubbly and stuff. Like, have you ever walked in a swamp? I have, but I assume walking in a swamp isn't comfortable, and I gotta imagine walking in creep is kinda like walking in a swamp. Not really what you're looking to do. Incog gonna go ahead and saturate up the second base with some of the guys from the first base. Makes sense, dropping some mules, get those minerals. He's banking a few here, but he's got stuff that he's doing. Uh, including more supply, which, as mentioned, supply block, not so good. Especially when you've actually got minerals in this case. But, 
giving a good opportunity to build up those uh, add-ons to the buildings, get some more of the like grenadey guys, or like some more of the like you know upgrades or whatever you're looking for. It's still looking like our scary monster is mostly just focused on being smoked, but bringing in an attack now. Early mutilists coming out from the scary monsters. Those are the fly guys right there that are about to wreck the supply line. Not a good situation. Incog not really seeing that spire early enough, I think. Um, but going ahead, getting his towers up now. Um, sending some marines in there to bait. And looks like gonna just roll in with a counterattack here. Which makes a lot of sense when you've got fly things in your base. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just go in for the counterattack. You know, show them who's boss. Be like, you can't attack me. I'll kill your base. Dropping the mule hammer, putting down some more towers. Mutalists are just sort of hanging out there and doing some, some business. Just doing some business. But doesn't look like our smoky opponent here has much at home. So he's gone all into flying units because smoke is airbound. So you got to to represent who he is. He needs to have airbound units because that's what he does. And he has a lot of mutalists. A whole metric ton of mutalisks. So we're going to need to see some nice anti-air support, which Hellbats are not going to do. They're going to just get blown up here. But of course, Incog can't just run away at this point. They're just going to die on the way back. So makes sense. Uh, Got to see some supply coming up here because the supply lines were very, very wrecked by those scary monsters in the air. This is a very high quality tactic, I think, actually. You know, you go in and you kill the supply lines. It's uh, it's as old as the army itself. If you interrupt the supply lines, you know, think about Napoleon. What did Napoleon in? Supply lines. So if you can get in the way of their supply lines, kill off those depots, all of a sudden you're winning games. You're making an omelet. Whatever you might want. Incog going for some more gas. Sitting on 500 so far, but really needs to get up into that 1,000 plus marker to really have a chance in this game, because it wins games. Our elusive and effusive smoke opponent is now being elusive in all sorts of ways in that he is not anywhere to be seen. Um, he's up to the three bases, which is good to see. Incog going towards his third as well. I would expect our smoky opponent to be taking his fourth here. But also, as expected, he's both elusive and taking his sweet time. Because, you know, there's the mutinous. Coming back in again, but they're really starting to take some damage from those towers, which is not so good for them. Um, Incog successfully identifying that this man wants to take out his supply. That is like this man's goal in life is to kill supply. And I respect that. But Incog recognizing that, putting some towers into his supply, um, still not saving it, but you know, it was a good thought. Um, these things, I feel like, I feel like our smoky opponent has been hurt by supply depots in the past. And so now he has a vendetta against them. I think our Chara smoke opponent hates supply depots like Incog hates rocks. So I feel like he's basically won this game at this point because he killed the supply depots. And if you kill the supply depots, you win. I think. Yeah. Incog, gonna extra tower up his supply line this time around because, you know, two towers wasn't enough. Um, I'm curious to see if Chara Smoke is gonna go with a tech switch of any form. I'm kind of feeling that he's just gonna build mutalisks. I feel like that's sort of the strategy he's running under right now is, can you beat me if I have 50 mutalisks? Maybe. But really, who's the winner if I have 50 mutalists? I, you know, I think it's the person who wins the game still, but Char Smoke, you may be right. It may be all about killing those supply depots and building those mutalists. So a nice four towers up there now, so that should help to keep them safe. Upgrading the third, Roger. trying to saturate up that second, get everything going nice, because you gotta get the money. Even if you're banking a thousand minerals, you gotta get the money. You can't spend the money if you don't have the money, which is why banking those minerals is really a good maneuver. Incog just going into heavy production mode here. I'm really interested to see what we're, we've got coming. The Baneling Mutalist push is going in here. I'm not sure. It looks like this could be some critical damage happening here. This is not looking pleasant. Um, oh, but there comes the Thor. It is getting wrecked. It is just getting wrecked. That is a lot of mutalisks. A whole lot of mutalisks. Incog just trying to spam out, spam out his pew pewy guys. 
is one of the best ways to deal with fly guys with the QP guys. They're nice, cheap, overpowered units. You gotta have the overpowered units to win the game. That is a lot of mutilists, though. Taking out that tower, even under repairs. I'm surprised he didn't go for the supply line, though. I really thought that's where the attack would come at, seeing how past behavior has gone. The plus side is Incog does have another orbital command to land, so he can take another base. Gotta find an answer for those mutilists, though. Not seeing any Vikings or anything coming out, so just gonna try and handle them with Marines, it looks like. The rocks. It's time for the rocks. And Thor going down, losing another factory, and some... Ooh, that's some Zerglings coming in now. This could be the end of our intrepid Terran player. I, you know, I don't think he was ready for the Mutalisks. He, he knew about them, but still, it's hard to deal with that many Mutalisks. Especially the mutilist baneling combination. Those Banelings really did work on the Hellbaths. It's really... I guess didn't do him a whole lot of good, actually, but still. Ooh. And they're still taking out that stuff. Getting that dirtling mule going again. Our intrepid Terran is on his last legs here. Down to 34 supply. Lots of mutilists coming in. Mashing that button. Wanting those marines, but I just don't think they're going to happen. And the problem with robots is, other than the Thor robots, these little robots cannot shoot up. Incog is going to call GG, I think. Calling GG. Good game. Well played. Chara Smoke. You are elusive, flighty, and really your smoky mutalisks were too girthy to handle. We're going to go into talking about that game now, and I'd just like to say that basically it came down to supply lines and the mutalisks destroying them. Also, I think you didn't kill enough rocks, so it really came down to, like, if you had killed more rocks, you know what I mean? If you just killed some more rocks then I think you could have gotten out of your base and handled them. You did build four towers eventually in your supply line, so you recognized the strategy, but then he pulled the old switcheroo on you and actually attacked something useful. And I don't think you were really prepared for that. Anyways, thank you for that game, Incognito, and thank you for joining us here on Super Senior StarCraft. I hope you'll come see us again soon, and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.